So what's going on? He's reviving us. Look at your neighbor and say, I've been revived. Now I'm being raised up. Oh, glory. But wait, wait, then look at verse 3. See, after the second day something happens, in the third day something happens, and then look what verse 3 says, then shall we know. See, there were some things you wouldn't be able to know or comprehend in the second day. But in the day that we're in now, now there's a knowledge and intimacy being revealed and released that we weren't ready for back then. And look at the watches. And then we shall know, if we follow on to know the Lord, His going forth is prepared as the morning. Now watch this. And He shall come unto us as the rain in the latter and the former rain under the earth. I like what you said, Apostle. I was going to quote it. I thought you had my message. <laughs> One of the other prophets said this. Before the Lord return, and listen, not for us, to us. Listen to this. He says right here, you better get this. One of the other prophets in the Old Testament said, before the return of the Lord, the former rain and the latter rain are going to happen in the same month. In other words, I'm going to speed things up in the third day. What used to take longer back in that old mindset is going to speed up in this mindset. You're no longer going to get it in the ground and it's going to be coming up. Come on. Yes. I've been to Israel, 1984. I want to go back. There's two rains in Israel. Two rains a year. There's the former rain, the latter rain. Now watch this prophetically. The first rain in Israel, the former rain produces the crops. The latter rain matures the crops. So what's he saying in this prophetic day? I'm going to speed up your maturity level. What took you weeks and months to study and understand, you're going to... It's going to be like a light turns on. It might be tonight. I might say one thing and go, oh my God, I never thought about it. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Oh, that's what that means. Jesus. Glory be to God. Yes. So then, that word rain kept jumping out at me. Uh -oh. So I had to go to the Hebrew. You know me? I'm a word man. And you think I'm going to make this up. But there's like two or three derivatives of this one Hebrew word. And when you define them all together, the Hebrew word for rain means this. Rain prophetically speaks of those who teach people how to shoot and release yep. an arrow. Yep. Come on. Yes. Oh, whoa, 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 wait. What is my job as an apostle? To equip you with the ammunition to hit the target you're dealing with. He said, it's people who train you, train archers how to shoot, and then watch this. And those who inform and instruct, and those who throw water on. And then I got to thinking, Ephesians. What did Paul say? We are clean by the washing of water by the word. I want to open that bottle and throw water all over you, but I heard you don't put water on a sister's hair. Because they spent a lot of money. Come on now. Don't look at me. Come on now. I was going to do it as an illustrative message. <laughs> so now I'm seeing it. In the third day, God's going to raise up some people that have been on the backside of the desert. They've not been on charisma. They've not been asked to speak at all the major conferences. But He's been grooming him and her and preparing them to release something to you that you need desperately in this day. It's all because of the water of the Word that's being poured into you. Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Yes. Whew. All right, go back to John. Y'all still here? Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. I'm just setting you up. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, my God. Chapter 2, verse 1 again. And the third day. Now we understand a little bit more about that day. There was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. Why did it have to say the city? Why did it have to say Galilee? Well, there's got to be a thing. Well, there is. You ready for this? <laughs> now remember, this is all happening in the third day. Say third day. Third day. Cana. You can go look this up, Google. <laughs> or look at your commentary. Cana was a city that was known, watch this, for an underground river system. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. that bubbled up in the middle of the city and brought refreshing to anybody that drank from yes. it. Yes. Wow. Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. In the third day, there's been something on the inside of the body of Christ. Yes. It's been a hidden reservoir. Yes. And all he's waiting for is you and I to cause what's in us to bubble up in us and out of us yes. and bring refreshing not just to us, but those outside that need it. Yes. 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 But then the word Galilee is what got me. Galilee in the Greek translates this. Under an open heaven, mm -hmm. even at night. Mm. Oh my God. So what? Put Cana and Galilee together and watch this. In the third day from Christ, where we are, no matter what you're facing, you've got an unseen system on the inside of you that's waiting to bubble up and bring refreshing to you even when you're going through a night difficult season. Now, there's nothing wrong with laying hands on folks. Mm -hmm. But some of them, we've laid so many hands, they ain't got no hair left on them. I'm not, I'm not so I, I and they don't change. Mm -hmm. Because we need a revelation. What you've got in you is what's going to bring the change. Yeah. And how to release it is what's going to bring the change. Yeah. Wow. So now watch this. Verse 2. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And this is what I love. He didn't just show up. He was asked to show up. And his students. Now why was he asked to show up to this celebration? Because they'd run out of something. They'd run out of wine. So look what it says in verse 3. And when they wanted wine... The mother of Jesus said unto him, her son Jesus, they have no wine. It's either the NIV or one of the other translations. I love how it says it. It says this about verse 3. It says it this way. When their wine failed. That's good right there. When their wine failed. You say, why is that important? Because watch this. For two of God's days, Mankind has come on the scene and every church and every denomination is a split from a split from a split from a split. And every time there's a split, you're no longer a voice, you're an echo. And every generation of an echo gets weaker. God didn't call you to be an echo, He called you to be a voice. So watch this. So for two days... We've been advertising to the world. We got it. We got all the answers. We're the church. Ain't no other church like us. Oh, come and taste the seed. Come to our program. Check out what we got. And we've been feeding it to the body of Christ, telling them it's the real thing. So what did God do? He let them run their gamut for two days. And in the third day, watch this, everything that man had produced out of his own ability was empty and no longer working and the people were still just as messed up before they came to the church and said, we can help you. So all of a sudden, something happens in the third day. You know what's happening right now? It's happening in this church, happening in our church, it's happening all over the nation. People are having a wake-up call and they're saying, wait a minute. We've been doing this without him. <coughs> Maybe we should ask Him to come to the ceremony. Maybe we ought to really invite the Holy Spirit back into the service. Let Him have His way, His will, no matter what He wants, how He has to do it. You know what? Everything we do, I like something you do, brother, and, and, and I joke about this a lot of churches. Our pattern and structure for a service we can't find in the Bible. Right. 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 It's the traditions of men. Mm-hmm. I grew up in a church where you got to sing your fast songs first. Come on now. Then you got to transition and do the slow songs. Then you make announcements. Then you do the offering. Then the man or woman of God gets up and preaches. And then if you still believe in it, you have an altar call. Wow. 
And yet all of that's by our desire. I remember one time I got tired of my people coming late. Now, I know this church don't, don't ever do it. I'm talking about the church down the street. I, know. <laughs> I got tired. And I joked with them from the pulpit. It didn't matter. But then I got upset because I knew they weren't late on Monday. Come on. All right. So they had more confidence and honor in their job than they did the house of God. Unless, truth be known, you got a new suit. Well, uh -oh. you got your hair done, ladies. You got on a good looking Chanel, something going on, and you want to be seen. You want your moment of faith. Well, you'll get it. That's all you're going to get. <laughs> My brother, I got so tired of him coming late. That was good, buddy. I got so tired of him coming late. One time at like 10 02, and I'm a, I'm a stickler about it. If service started at 10, you better start playing at 10. <coughs> Well, they weren't playing, and I looked around half, half the congregation wasn't there yet. I said, that did it. I got up out of my seat. I walked up, opened my Bible. I said, open your Bibles, too. I started preaching. No music yet. No announcements. No nothing. I started preaching. And watch this. Here's what folk did. They came in the door. Was it daylight city? <laughs> Watch this. We're so used to how church goes, we even come according to it. I'm going to prophesy you. Here's what's going to happen re real soon. Y'all are going to walk through that door, and you're going to have your whole plan for Sunday morning. And you're going to hit the door, and the glory's already going to be here. The folk going to start dropping like flies all over the place. Falling into the power of God. Prophesying, weeping, crying out to God. Because God's going to have His way. Yes. Amen? Amen. He's going to do it His way. Yes. So here come, they said, we need Jesus to come. And I believe there's people all over the world now that are fed up with religion, and they're saying, Jesus, come back to the house. Yes. Come on, come fix this thing. So watch what happens. 